She was Wanda Lewis, then she was Wanda. Ms. Brandau, while we're waiting, what is the current arrearage? Your Honor, I have um, $5,200 for, for the, the rent. I have uh, late fees and I have the costs as well for a total of $5,542. Fifty-nine. Miss Lewis, can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. This is Judge Middleton here at the courthouse. Yes. Uh, the title of this case is Hatfield Investments LLC versus Wanda Lewis and all occupants at nine hundred one. Yes. <laughs> As a tenant in a landlord-tenant proceeding, you have certain rights. Those include. The right to obtain counsel for representation in this matter. If you cannot afford an attorney, a legal aid attorney may be available to help you. You have a right to a trial by a jury or by the court. If the action is for non-payment of rent and if you are eligible for any assistance, you may not need a judgment to get that assistance. The summons and complaint, which you've already received, should be sufficient. If the plaintiff is agreeable, the Citizens Mediation Services, Inc. may be available as a possible source of case resolution. If both parties are agreeable to that, contact us and we can set that up. If you do reach an agreement with the plaintiff and a consent judgment is entered by the court, you would waive the rights listed above but have the following additional rights. The judgment may not be enforced until three business days had passed. You could move to set aside the judgment within those three days if you misunderstood what you consented to or what you were waiving. Your motion to set aside the judgment would be set for a landlord-tenant hearing. However, if the judge does not find in your favor, the original judgment would stand. According to Attorney Brandau, your rent, is that through March, Jessica? That's correct, Your Honor, until the end of March. It's $5,200 plus court costs of $259. Oh, no, he's. Let me add that up. $130. Plus the service fee of thirty-seven fifty-nine plus seventy-five dollar statutory attorney fee two forty-two fifty-nine. Yeah, I got the same number she did. What's your position, Miss Lewis? Do you wish to stay there or do you wish to move? No, actually, I, I wish to stay there. Stay here. Um, um, unfortunately, um, uh, the job that I had, which was Pfizer, um, as you know, I've, I'm never not working. Um, the job that I had there, it was a temporary um, position um, until full time if they still needed that position, which um, that position paid $32 an hour. Um, it ended up that they ended up eliminate all four of the positions of the people that they brought in. And then they didn't offer us um, another position inside of Pfizer. So I had been um, sending Mr. Hatfield like 500 a week. Um, and then I left there October 30th. I did have another um, position um, but it ended up, they ended up hiring someone inside the company. Now I do, however, uh, start Ox Paper Mill and I had contacted um, the Keystone, which they have offered to pay 3000 of it. And I have a meeting with them um, Monday to take all my information in. And I also have, um, I can't. All right, well, that's, that's, that's promising. Keystone was about out of money. They've got a couple other small funds that maybe they could help you. It's a lot easier to keep a person in the premise and keep them from being homeless 
The law requires that I adjourn this for seven days to give you time to talk to Keystone or get legal help. Um, I've already, I have a meeting with Keystone Monday. All right, well, let's continue this to next Friday at 2.40. That'd be March 24th. Today is the 24th, Your Honor. Would that be the 31st? 31st? Yes, sorry about that. That's what I have up on my screen. Well, let's talk about this a little more, Ms. Lewis. By the time we get here next Friday, there'll be another month's rent due, which would be another 800 for April. Um, what will cure this is paying the entire amount. They mm -hmm. can agree to give you more time if we meet next Friday, I would give you 10 days from next Friday to pay 5,542 plus 800. Okay, I'm looking at this paper, Judge Middleton, and, and I received this uh, January, was it I think January 24th or 28th and at that time um it was it states 3600 but 3725 because it was a $125 late fee I know but eight and eight is only 16 so well that was as of January yes so if we add 1600 into that You get 4,800. Yeah. Uh, what's the, how do we get to 52? That's what I was confused about. I'm looking at my math again, Your Honor. Um, one second. I'm still coming up with 5,200 for basically six months of rent at the at the um, $800 a month and $400 for the rest of September, which was not paid. Well, then your pleadings are incorrect because at the time of the filing of the complaint, as she indicated, uh, rent paid through September 15th, total rent due at that time was $3,600. So there may be an additional $400 for half of a month. So that may be the difference. But we can just, it must be the other half of the month. But the numbers still don't work. Um, well, if you have, I have, yeah, the $800 for four months and 400 totaling 3,600 at that time in January. All right, so January 3,600. Now we've got February and March, which is $800 a month. So 3,600 plus 1,600. Yeah, 52 was my math was wrong. That's correct. We add in January and February or February and March, and that's where you get the 5,200. All right, now you stay in contact with Keystone. We'll address this matter further next Friday at 2.40 by Zoom. Okay. All right, I'll see you then. Do you have any questions? No. All right, defective calculation on the judge's part. There's also a dangling $125 or more late fee in there that we may have to include when we discuss this next. All right, Ms. Brandau, that time works for you? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. All right, I'll see you both next uh, Friday. Great, Okay. Have a, thank you, well, have a good weekend. This, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Now we'll move on. 
All right, uh, Ms. Bauer, I'm going to bring Wanda Lewis in. As you saw, she was having trouble. Ms. Lewis, you get your situation straightened out there? It looks like you're having a problem. Well, um, Judge Middleton, I am working now. I'm at Ox Paper Mill. Um, All right, well, let me slow down for a minute and say call the case. This is file 23130LT. It's entitled Hatfield Investments LLC versus Wanda Lewis. Attorney Jessica Brandau is here. And she's been here on multiple hearings in this matter. Also standing by is Meg Bauer from Legal Aid. This case has quite a lot of history. On March 24th, we were here the first time. The defendant's arrearage was substantial. Uh, she owed $5,200 through April. Rent was $800 a month. And that, I mean, through March, we added April's rent which made it 6,000 plus court costs, 6,424 is what it would have cost through May, through April. Um, so she indicated that Keystone was gonna help pay part of it. She had a new job at Ox Paperboard. So we continued the matter until March 31st. Um, we made the same finding we did on March 31st that the amount of rent was $6,000. There was $175 of late fees and Keystone was gonna pay a portion of it. That did not happen. Uh, the rent was not paid. Plaintiff requested a writ of eviction and uh, that is sitting here. It was filed April 13th, so now it's April 28th, 15 more days have passed because I was on vacation. Uh, you wrote me a long letter that I had a lot of trouble reading, but the bottom line is um, you haven't paid the rent and they still want you to move and they've asked me to file a writ of eviction. Uh, Ms. Brandau, anything you wish to add? Um, Were you able to read her letter? I, I did read um, what I could understand of it, Your Honor. Um, I have spoken to my client as well, and um, just here to see, you know, what, how we can proceed and how we can um, help Miss Wanda um, with her concerns. All right. Well, she keeps saying he won't talk to me, but he doesn't have to talk to her. He was doing this through you. Um, I would put the three of you in a breakout room, but somebody's in the breakout room. So, is your client willing to work with Miss Lewis? Um, only to a certain extent, Your Honor. I mean, this is the arrearages here, like you said, are substantial. Um, I don't see how she is going to be able to get caught up anytime soon, especially with the additional rent being added. Um, additionally, there are some electric bills that are unpaid that my client is having to deal with. No, and those are paid. It is it's paid. So that my client, okay. All right, I, well, don't, 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 we'll let you speak. Okay, sorry. So All at, right, well, at this, do you have $6,500 laying in a, under your mattress? No, but uh, as I stated, I tried to call um, Mr. Hatfield and the attorney several times, but no one's answered me. And I was trying to call him to tell him that you know, I do make a decent amount. Um, All right. Okay, well, we understand that. The problem is he doesn't want to work with you for the next 10 months to get his rent No, uh, it would take me approximately, um, because I had told Mr. Hatfield when I got my taxes, I would pay everything up. Unfortunately, my taxes were messed up, and so I had to do an amendment, and my taxes at that time was um, $10,542, so I had no problem messing it I mean, 
paying everything up until I started working. But however, I have no problem with at least paying Mr. Hatfield a thousand a week. And I still told him when taxes get, when, when they do come, I would also pay him extra months of rent when it comes. But unfortunately, um, I had to go to the IRS to identify and have them amended, uh, amended as well because the person that did them really screwed them up. So I had to go to H&R Block and have H&R Block amend them. And they are, I have a few more weeks before they come. But I have no problem with at least paying Mr. Hatfield a thousand a week and catch it up and after that pay him. Well, a thousand a week is a substantial payment. Well, they don't I have to... They don't have to, they have 56 days to ask for the writ of eviction, and then they have an additional 56 days before they serve it. So that gives them quite a bit of wiggle room. They have requested a writ of eviction, but I have not signed it. Um, Ms. Brandow, what's your thoughts after having heard what Ms. Lewis said? Um, Your Honor, I would have to check with my client as far as whether he is willing to um rely on Ms. Wanda's representation on what she can pay per week. Um, I would have to check with him on that because I know that, that he has tried to work with her in the past and has not been given the, um, the money that he that Ms. Wanda that, has indicated. That, that, that's, that's, Are you in the house now, Ms. Lewis? Uh, yes, Judge. Well, it looked like it was a mess. It looked like there was all terrible disarray. Uh, my house? Yes. Oh, no. This is the porch. There's nothing dirty about the porch. It's just kids' toys. I keep okay. this house um, anytime anybody ever comes right, well, here. When, you were in the garage or something. Is maybe no, this the is the porch. We, I don't have a garage. This is the porch. And right. there's nothing It is nowhere near dirty, uh, right. a mess at all. Well, I don't live there. Extent, there. When we have the hearing, we had two hearings. Yes. And then I made a ruling, and then you wanted to talk to him, and he's like, I don't want to talk to her anymore. I had two court hearings, pay the money or move. So you wrote this long letter, and I set this hearing, and Ms. Brandau did talk to Mr. Hatfield, but you're going to be more than $7,000 behind on your rent. And, yes, uh, and that would take me and about in May's rent. Um, you said Keystone was going to pay some. What happened to that? Well, Keystone sent a letter um, stating that uh, what they were going to pay, they had. They didn't tell me that they had to. I had to pay um, the rest before, so I had called like two one one to help out, but they nowhere had any funding. So after um, I couldn't come up with the other uh, amount that was on the letter, then Keystone said that um, once I start paying on it, then they can help with the, and it was a thousand dollars. But once I start paying on it, then they could pay that because that's all they paid up to was a thousand dollars. How are you gonna afford a thousand dollars a week? Um, Judge Middleton, um, I gross over 2,200 a week. All right, well, you're doing pretty good then. Uh, so having heard all that, Ms. Brandau, what's your thoughts? Um, I would think that my client would want to see proof of Ms. Uh, Ms. Lewis's employment and proof of what she is making before he would make a decision on that. He may be, up, he may be willing to work with her, but again, we would need some paperwork to show because so far he has not received... Right. Do you want me to enter the writ of eviction, or are you willing to have me reset this? I think our preference would be to have the writ of eviction available, Your Honor. But if we need to reset it, we could we could work with that as well. Well, I could enter the writ. You're entitled to it. But if she's going to do this, uh, I agree. Uh, <clears throat> now, one of the problems is once you file the action, uh, then you get in trouble if you accept partial payment. But I will allow the defendant to make any payment without precluding the plaintiff's ability to proceed. 
Now, this isn't a termination of tenancy. It's a non-payment of rent case. Um, but perhaps it will be safest to see whether she puts up or Is not. Is there any way you, I, and Mr. Hatfield can have a meeting? Can have what? Uh, a meeting. Um, I'm speaking to the lawyer. I will certainly. Well, I don't think he wants to have a meeting with you. I think he wants to do this through his attorney, but that's up to him. Through his attorney, or he's also requested that in the past, he's also requested that communication go um, written only. And the reason for that was that they were having communication problems when everything was being done verbally. And that was why he did not respond. Well, and, and again, that, that's not true. Uh, I do have text messages to that effect in writing that my client has sent me, well, that he sent to you. Yes, uh, we have the same messages. I'm going to continue this for 10 days. Continue request for stay of writ to May 15th, 2023 at 1.15 um, to see whether he's agreeable to continue this if not they're entitled to the writ you yeah. want, you want him to work out some deal with you but he doesn't have to he I'm can say saying, i've had such a bad history with this client i don't want to get another eight hundred dollars another eight hundred dollars behind i want to just get her out of there and get another tenant in there so you can show some good faith we've been going at this for months and so far, no money has been tendered for payment. No, so you're saying it was hard uh, to find a job, but I am employed now. All right. Well, you I told me back. Always am. You told me a month ago. When did you start at Ox? Um, Monday. Last Monday? No. Um, I did orientation and all that, which we get paid for. But my actual start date is going to be Monday. I've been in there back and forth this week doing orientation that we get paid for, et cetera. But my actual. Well, you told me that back on March 24th. No, on March 24th, I never told you, Ox, because I was supposed to go to. Uh, no, yes, you did. I wrote it down and we can watch it. You told me you were the same thing. You were going through orientation. You were going to start on Monday. That's what you told me on March At Ox Paper Mill? I just did a. Yeah. You had temporary at Pfizer and you were going to start at Ox. Oh, yes, the one in White Pigeon, but the, they did not call me back. But the one in uh, Constantine, I've done my orientation and drug testing after my surgery, and that I definitely start there Monday. Well, as I have some reservations as well, Ms. Brandau. If this isn't going to work, Ms. Lewis, I'm inclined to enter the writ of eviction on the 15th of March. I don't have a problem with paying them uh, 1000 a week. Well, they, they may not want a thousand a week. They want seven thousand dollars. They want it all at once. They don't want to wait eight weeks or ten weeks to get paid. Um, they don't trust you. And you told me in March that you started on Monday at Ox Paperboard, and here we are, thirty-two days. Yes, later, the one in White Pigeon. Yes, the one in White Pigeon did tell me that. Um, I would have a position out you there. You told me you had gone through orientation and you were going to start on Monday, which is the exact same thing you just told me just now. I don't. Um, I, I, from you? That's what I wrote. Um, All right. No. All right. I guess it's time to put up or prepare to move out. Uh, she can discuss this with her client, but we're already lapping over into the next month. So I'm costing him another $800.
What she wanted me to do was ex execute the writ of eviction immediately, today, and have the sheriff come put you out tomorrow. Uh, you have to pay the rent or move, and you want a payment plan, but he hasn't agreed to give you one. And you wrote a treatise of a letter, but that's really what it boils down to. You either need to pay the rent or move. Keystone yeah. was going to pay. You were going to get your tax return. You were going to get a job at Ox. The check's in the mail. I only had two beers. Uh, you know, he doesn't believe your representations uh, because they haven't been borne out in the past. I've never, I've never said a check in the mail if there's not a check in the mail. Oh, that's just a figure of speech. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, um, okay. All right. Ms. Brandau, he probably won't be very happy about this. But let's see where we are in 10 days. And uh, plus, he has to pay his lawyer every time to be here. You show up for free. He's got to pay her to come represent his interest. And uh, so it's costing him legal fees and additional rent. So you should have prepared to tender a large sum of money uh, by May 15th, or he may just request the writ. All right. Well. Kick Your Honor, can I have the, the date again for the continuation? May 15th at 1.15. Great, thank you. I do just want to make you aware as well, I am actually expecting a baby on May 19th. Oh. So if anything is to happen in that time frame, I will have a, an attorney substitute for me. All right, well, best of luck. All right, thank you. Thank All you. Right. Okay, here. All right, you're good to go, Miss Lewis. We'll send you a new notice. Okay, thank you. Do I just hang up? I'm gonna hang up on you here. Judge, I think it's appropriate for me to get out of your hair at this point as well. Yeah, I think so. All right, best of luck. I don't know where that one's going.